Hello and welcome to Spark 22. This is Maker Center Learning can happen in any classroom. Thank you for joining us. I am Paul Shercliffe. I have been in education for 27 years, mostly teaching physics and mathematics at the high school level. You can find me on Twitter at Shirky17. My website and my email are my name, www.paulshercliffe.org and paul at paulshercliffe.org. These slides that I'm going through here, you, there is a bit.ly for them, bit.ly slash spark22mcl, all caps. There are four parts of this presentation, and so I broke it up into four videos of unequal length. This first one that you're in right now is uh, the description, and I'm going to just talk about some of the facets of maker-centered learning. Part two, I will give some classroom examples. Part three, we'll have examples from around the school, promoting curiosity and creativity in all of your spaces. And then part four, we'll have some food for thought and resources. Maker-centered learning is not a new concept. It is actually a mashup of those great pedagogies and ideas we were taught about years ago by Dewey, Montessori, Papert, Piaget and Vygotsky. Whole child, choice, interest, curiosity, experiential, purposeful, time to explore, constructivism, constructionism, social, peer, student-centered, play, individualized. It's not one more thing to add to your plate. It is a way to learn, so it's a way to do things differently than what most of us are doing now. I believe it is the best way that we learn. At the core is designing, building, creating of an artifact. We make stuff, we prototype, sometimes more than one prototype. Uh, then there are conversations that you can have from it or around it. It's about the conversations, discussions. Those conversations can be different for each learner and the teacher weaves the necessary content into these discussions. The artifact can be a conduit through, through which all the learning happens and it can even be a demonstration of the learning. Conversations is what it is, it is about. The learning and assessment are in those conversations. The ones you have with a student or a small group of students, as well as those that students have with each other. These conversations can be while they are building, as well as after they are done creating. Conversations, learning, and assessment are ongoing. The conversations can be, and probably should be, different for each learner, while still weaving in the content that you need to do. The emphasis is process over product. Making an artifact is important, having that physical component, but not necessarily the be-all, end-all. You can have the conversations without finishing the artifact, so the learning can still happen. Obviously, we want the students to learn how to be successful and feel successful. But sometimes we don't have enough time for everyone to finish making something in class. That's one of the difficult parts of maker-centered learning, helping every individual to be as successful as possible within our constraints. Making opens up and utilizes multiple parts of the brain at the same time and bridges them to work together. It is naturally transcurricular, blending various disciplines, having them Inter interweave, so sometimes we can't even tell where one stops and the other starts. Everyone knows something you don't. Give them the opportunity to share what they know. One time in class, we were making uh, wooden cube puzzles, puzzle pieces, Soma puzzles for those who know, and the students were coloring them, some with markers, some were painting with acrylics, or figuring out polish, um, some were just trying... Um, colored pencils, crayons, whatever. One student wanted to hydro dip and I didn't know anything about it. So they told me what it was and what they needed. I just had to say, okay. They found what they needed in the room, which is, you know, people always ask me, why do you have so much stuff in your room? And my reply is always, I never know what a student might need. They hydro dipped their pieces, then showed others how to do it and helped others do it. Some people call this distributed teaching and learning. Everyone is a teacher and everyone is a learner in a makerspace. 
One of the great advantages of maker-centered learning is that there are so many modalities and ways of making. They can be digital or analog. They can be low cost or expensive, low tech or high tech. There's drawing, painting, modeling, coding, robotics, poster design, video, podcast, gardening, woodworking, plays, songs. Because there are so many modalities, every learner should be able to find some that speak to them. Students might already be doing things that we wouldn't have thought of. Listen to them. Give them space to try things. You don't have to know how to do everything. I know that's a hard thing to get. You can't be expected to. You just have to be comfortable with exploring the unknown with others. Remember, everyone is a teacher and everyone is a learner in an MCL environment. One student was explaining their work to me, what they had done so far, what they had learned, what their next step was, when a nearby student overheard that and kind of said, hey, I already did that next part, I can help. Which was great because this is a student that normally keeps to themselves and struggles with getting steps accomplished. But here it was that they could help someone uh, do something. So MCL helps develop agency. Students learn to know what is next as well as what they know how to do. And they like sharing and helping others. Building that confidence is important. Empowerment, agency, vital things that we want to get to our kids. MCL is very much learner-centered and offers many opportunities for voice and choice. The conversations we have come from their perspective. What do they want to make or how they want to make it is up to their choice. What materials do they want to use? There are often many paths to get to our learning goal. Sometimes we might have to limit the choices and give them a list of options for our own sanity. Uh, but we still need to you know, listen to, to students. Sometimes that one student that often has um, a different idea or a different path. Uh, then we want to let them explore that. Making allows students entry point, uh, entry points to learning from their point of view and or from their perspective. A conversation with the learner who will probably be an engineer starts differently than the one who, who will probably be an artist. But both conversations can evolve to discuss the content that is, that is at hand. Studying Newton's laws through mousetrap cars, the engineer wants it to go the furthest. The artist wants it to look good. We can have both of those conversations. They can tweak their design to incorporate what they want, and we can still weave in the ideas about Newton while that is happening. When they start from their own perspective, their own viewpoint, conversations are much easier to have. And again, the learning is in the conversations. Maker-centered learning fosters the seeds of education that people like to talk about, but for some reason, people always leave out the most important one, curiosity. All the others follow from it. Creativity, collaboration, communication, critical thinking, community. There are many other seeds that you can come up with for education, and there was a, a Twitter uh, flow one day when some educators were on a road trip about all the seeds we had come up with. Um, there's a link in the speaker notes on this slide. People like to talk about creativity a great deal and for good reason. There are many benefits to developing a culture of creativity. Learning activities become multidisciplinary. Self-expression is prevalent. Thinking and problem solving are needed and happen. Stress and anxiety are reduced. Our minds end up in this kind of happy fun zone when we get to explore our creativity. We feel a sense of purpose, pride, accomplishment. We find others with similar passions. It's nice to find someone else that likes things that you like. Our ability to focus increases, so does our risk taking. We come to learn that progress takes iteration. Once we get going with creativity, we start to get down a path towards innovation also. Making is just good for us. Um, it help us, helps us find a sense of accomplishment. We remember things that we make, not tests that we take. Dan Ryder shared via Twitter an example of a student that just couldn't stop sharing the chessboard they had made. You know, look what I did. 
this is this is what I made. This is mine. You know, can you picture the student smiling as she shows off her work, the pride, the accomplishment, the success? You know, I made something that I or someone else, if I give it as a gift, can use in the world. Majorly important. We are all born makers. You know, from mud pies, blanket forts, sticks for swords, tea time. You know, it's it's how we understand the world. It's how we made sense of the world and how we explored it. But for some reason, we stop. Then we wonder why we don't understand the world. The world is just a STEM maker lab waiting for us to explore. What kind of maker are you? Well, that's interesting. That was just there a minute ago. Um, that's a timer video that we're not going to use in this kind of session. Uh, what kind of maker are you? Sewing, baking, metalwork, gardening? I've always been into electronic gadgets and technology and, you know, a geek kind of that way. About five years ago, I got into woodworking and created a, a garage workshop. It'll take a few moments to think about what you make or what you would like to learn to make. If we were together, we would explore this for a few minutes to see and get ideas from other people and see if we have any commonalities. Here are some of the answers from one school. Look at the variety. Wouldn't this be a good activity to do with staff to, so you could find some people that have common interests? You know, we got plants, we got uh, posters, baking, karagami, gardening, beadwork. You know, jewelry is a great, big thing. Um, quilts, scrapbooking, cooking, baking, um, lots of things. You know, and now here's the question. How can you incorporate that idea into your classroom? Can you find a partner in crime that you could, uh, that could kind of help you with doing this? It's always better to have a, have, have a friend to work things with. Could this lead you to a Teach Like a Pirate Day, which is a day where um, everybody gets to, you know, the whole school, everyone gets to, like, pick. I just want to teach about this for one day. That's it. And everyone kind of does it. And kids kind of sign up where they want to go uh, based on interest. Uh, just a neat day to kind of explore things. You know, check it. Do it with the kids. See what kind of things that they already make. Help them find others with similar interests. Maker is a mindset. It's a way of approaching things. You know, that there's a willingness to try new things. I can fail and try again and eventually get something. I learn from that failure. I can take things apart and understand them. I, I can mash things up and make something viable. I can manipulate things in the world to fit me or help my community. I can impact the world around me. Ideation, prototype, iteration, tinkering, really important words. But it only happens if you're given time, space, and support. John Spencer made a nice graphic about some of the offshoots of maker mindset. You know, empathy, uh, we learn it and we learn to begin with it when we develop that maker mindset. We're explorers. We want to know how things work, how we can adjust them, how we can adapt them. We, we become more engaged, have more focus and attention. We're willing to try risks, try new things because failure is all right. Things don't always work the first time. I always talk to kids about, you know, when you were a baby and you started to learn how to walk, did you just get up and walk right away or did you fall down a bunch? That's life. That's how everything is. Um, divergent. We, we, we start thinking differently and we see the divergence in uh, the world. And we see that as, as the differences as strengths. Uh, we connect to different areas and different ideas. Problem solving uh, it happens just naturally. And we can do almost anything because we know how to solve problems. You know, learning to build confidence and confidence with processes, materials, and tools. You know, inventive, innovative. Um, we discover our passions and interests, which is really what I think schools should focus more should focus more on. You know, what are we good at? You know, right now, or what are we interested in right now? We kind of got to say right now because that can change as we grow. It always does, right? Because you learn you you learn new stuff, so those ideas change. Um, Maker mindset. Very important. 